Hi everyone, welcome to Aftermath TV. Caroline here alongside the dream team made up of Jimmy Corderas, Anthony Corelli, and Nug. And Nug, I gotta give you a shout out before we get going here. I love that shirt. <laughs> it's a Velveteen Dream shirt. After my interview uh, a couple weeks ago, I felt I had to support the man, uh, or rather he told me to. Uh, so yeah, I just got it this week. I'm very excited. I'll be wearing it for a long time. I just find it hilarious that he said in the interview he didn't need merchandise or t shirt He still doesn't need it, but there it is. But there and it is. Uh, happy hat day, y'all. <laughs> yes, another yeah. happy hat day. All right. Right, let's get this show started with some wins and fails, and I want to get it started because my win is from Monday Night Raw when Bobby Lashley came out with Braun Strowman. Now, I don't know about you guys, but there's just something for me when I see Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman, two of the biggest humans I've ever seen, <laughs> go and fight Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. And at some point, Bobby Lashley was holding one, you know, with either Sa Sammy or Kevin with Sammy. one arm. Yeah, one arm. How? How do you do these things? So, I don't know if I'm the only one who loved it, but what do you guys think? I, th I, I, I love the return of Bobby Lashley. Yeah. I think... Uh, when he was with the WWE previously, he was very talented and had a lot of potential. He took some time away and went and honed his craft, became a better performer, became a better speaker. Now he's, he's actually more articulate on the microphone. It's almost like that time away helped him become a better overall WWE superstar, which is what the WWE is looking for. Yeah, it's funny because Braun Strowman's so big, and I mean, Bobby Lashley's significantly smaller, but he has so much muscle yeah, mass great. that he can be in that team and fit. Um, yeah, sometimes when somebody is a man of few words and, and actions, you know, speak louder than words type yeah. thing, that's fine. But in sports entertainment, you also got to be a man with words. So uh, <laughs> his evolution, he's matured. It's great to have him back. And all of a sudden, you start saying, hmm, ooh, how would he do against this guy? How would he do against that guy? And there's a lot of possibilities there to put Bobby Lashley uh, into and have opponents for. It's weird to say, I feel, and it's weird to say that, uh, I think he's kind of being underutilized right now. He hasn't really had a chance to speak. He's been in a couple of tag team matches. He came out and beat up Elias on his big return, and it wasn't even really a match. Right. He hasn't had a chance to really connect with the audience who may not know who he is yet. We know who he is because we've been watching wrestling a long time. Right. But it's maybe he should grab the mic and let us know what his intentions are so the crowd can get behind him. Well, I didn't expect him to come out. Did you guys expect Bobby Lashley to come out with Braun? Uh, no, no. I, I, I kind of almost expected maybe another... Ten-year-old? <laughs> yeah. yeah. like, Nicholas is busy. It seems yeah. like every time somebody comes back, they have to put together this elaborate repackaging whole presentation. But sometimes, why not just come out and be a solid workhorse yeah. and let the fans organically get behind you? Yeah. And hopefully they're going to do that. Yeah. Let, let's let his work for you to speak for itself. Less is more, right? Our favorite saying here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know that guy. Anthony, your win has to deal with uh, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre, um, I mean, I, I know him personally, and I, and I like him, and I know what he's been through, but just his presence in the ring last night was, this guy, he's been a blue chipper from day one. I remember the first time I saw him was actually at an airport, and I, I didn't know he was even uh, a wrestler, and I was going somewhere, and I'm like, look at this guy. This guy could be long hair, big muscles, and he was really young. I, I didn't realize how young he was at the time, uh, and he already did well, and he was the chosen one and all that stuff. You know... He, had, he went his own ways, gained some experience as well. He actually went to speech therapy at the beginning because his Scottish accent was so strong. Mm -hmm. But whatever they, they've done, he was awesome on the mic last night. It, he's great with Dolph. He doesn't need Dolph. He could be the world heavyweight champion, and I would be totally fine mm -hmm. with that. His physique, his presence, his timing, everything has just evolved to a point where he is absolutely ready to cash in that blue chip stock right now. He's awesome. He I'm might not need Dolph, but them together is an excellent, excellent team. We've already mm -hmm. started comparing them to the old Shawn Michaels yeah. and yeah. Diesel. Uh, I just like it's two guys with a chip on their shoulder. Yes. And having them both be against the locker room of guys that have gotten soft mm -hmm. as, uh, since Drew's been gone, I love it. I love the crowd that. loved it last night, too. I almost have to parrot what I said about Bobby Lashley. The same thing, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder yeah. sometimes. But that absence also going elsewhere and honing your craft. And I was there as well when he first debuted, especially on the blue brand, because he was part of the SmackDown brand way back when. And you saw the potential there. And sometimes potential doesn't always necessarily equal success. I mean, it's there. Uh, a little young maybe for him, too much too soon to be deemed the chosen one. That time away definitely helped him.
Absolutely. He's just matured. Yep, yep exactly. Now your win, Big Cass? My win is Big Cass on <laughs> SmackDown Live. Uh, you want a chance to restart your career after an injury. You want to make an impact. You do it on a brand new show. And you do it against the guy that everybody loves, Daniel Bryan. Big Cass showed up last week and went chest to face with <laughs> ja Daniel Bryan. And then in the big match at the end of the night, took Daniel Bryan out while Shinsuke was taking care of AJ Styles. Big Cass has a big future, and I wouldn't be surprised. I know on SmackDown we have a Miz TV with Daniel Bryan, and everyone wants to see Miz and Daniel Bryan fight. I, I really wouldn't be surprised to find out that Big Cass has been sent to get in Daniel Bryan's way by the Miz. If that's the case, I don't mind this in the very least because everybody assumes that down the line, Miz and Daniel Bryan, this issue is going to get resolved that started last year on SmackDown. And I'm looking forward to that happening, but I don't want it to happen right away. I want another, maybe a little layers and maybe a little buffer with, with Kaz being added to this mix is going to add a little something to that. You have to wait for dessert. That's yes. right. Um, and big Kaz is big, and <laughs> Daniel Bryan is also a leg lock and an ankle lock specialist. So I tell you, put a heel hook on there. He's not going to be so big when he's lying down. down. Absolutely. Speaking of uh, SmackDown, that's your win, Jimmy, from the Superstar Shakeup. You uh, like how the roster's looking now. Yeah, exactly. After Monday night and saw how many people had been transferred over to Raw from SmackDown and, and the new additions like the Bobby Lashleys and stuff like that, I went, ooh, SmackDown pretty much got decimated. And then all of a sudden, you see people coming out. You saw big cast. You saw, in my opinion, the biggest coup, Samoa Joe mm -hmm, yeah. on SmackDown, who I'm a big supporter of. So the, the Oscar there, we saw that. I just love the way that SmackDown looks after this after this uh, sh Superstar shakeup. I was I was concerned going into Tuesday night. Not concerned at all. Now I love the blue brand right now. I think both brands came away mm -hmm. better than they were. Yep. And it's tough, you know. The shakeup is is an interesting phenomenon because there's just so many dynamic pieces, mm -hmm. and to 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 both benefit. It's tough, but they pulled it off. I think so. I think so, too. I, I, st I think SmackDown came out on top, but I'm, that's, I'm, that's just my well, opinion. You know who came I'm out biased. on top? The WWE Universe. It's true. We oh, all yeah. win. This is a perfect segue into my fail because I do feel like a lot of the male superstars, both now on Raw and SmackDown, they have new storylines. It's exciting. But I wish we saw more major changes in the female mm -hmm. division. You know what I mean? I, I, I look at SmackDown. We have Asuka and Charlotte now. And it kind of makes me sad for Becky Lynch because I feel like she's so good at what she does on the mic, in the ring, everything, her personality. I feel like she's kind of going to get drowned out a little bit by Charlotte and Asuka. I wish. Mm -hmm. And on the other side in Raw, we have Nia and Alexa. Like, I wish we would have seen more changes, major changes in storyline and for the career careers of these superstars in the female division. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's a little bit tough, though, because you've got so many superstars on the yeah. roster. There's only so much Well, time competition's there. only going to make the, the, the people that rise up to the occasion excel and get noticed. Exactly. So it, it, it could be a good environment for somebody to really yeah. break another barrier. Yeah. No, your fail. Uh, my fail, real quick. I love Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel, and I think they're fine on their own. Maybe they could be a tag team. They keep looking for a leader. They talked to uh, after the Miz left. They talked to Finn Balor and they talked to Seth Rollins. I don't think they need one. I think they're good as is. Get out of the Miz's shadow and find your own way, or you're going to get picked up by somebody like Bray Wyatt and find a uh, whole new way. Woke entourage. <laughs> woke entourage. <laughs> ah, woke entourage. Anthony, go ahead, my friend. Your fail. Oh, my fail. Yeah, my fail is uh, no way, Jose. I just, thought, I just, I thought, love him. Yeah, it's just you know what. Adam Rose was here not long ago, and it's like the same thing, just with a little Puerto Rican flair to it. Or I think it's Puerto Rican. Um, I, his 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 party guys were like, I wouldn't even want to go to that party. I would. Every time they come out, I'm like, let's go. He's a rather nerd go to a party with a guy dressed like a hamburger, right? Yeah. What? Yeah, that's what the Rose Bunchies are dressed like hamburgers. Uh, hamburgers so. are delicious. <laughs> All right, Jimmy, the finish is, off. The, the oh. hype is... Okay, really, really quick, my fail. In case people haven't heard, this Friday there's a big event called the Greatest Royal Rumble what? ever. Uh, 50 superstars in a, in a Royal Rumble-style match, and the winner gets a trophy. Yay! Yay. Let's, let's put something behind it. Let, a, a future opportunity, title opportunity, something, <laughs> anything. Why not main event? SummerSlam. There you go. They, like they have that. the Rumble main event mania, have this Greatest Royal Rumble main event SummerSlam. Save, have it be for something. Save all these thoughts for after the break because we're going to be talking about the Greatest Royal Rumble right, well, right after right, commercials. But, we're, yeah, don't, don't lose your train of thoughts, please. I love Tro. Win Fail. Brought to you by Mattel. 
relive the adrenaline pumping action and amazing battle moves with WWE action figures. Welcome back to Aftermath TV, everyone. And guys, big question for you. What match will everyone be talking about the most after the Greatest Royal Rumble? Um, I think it's going to be Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. I'm tired of seeing them talk about the same thing. <laughs> every Raw, every SmackDown, there's always some kind of promotion. I'm, I'm done with it, but I want Roman Reigns to win because I think that he owes it to himself. And I don't care what the universe, if they boo him, if they don't, it's Roman's game. Well, in that sense, uh, what people tend to forget about is they constantly talk about Roman Reigns, whether they like him or not, whether they boo or they cheer. Roman Reigns has been a hot topic of conversation since day one and definitely will be talked about. I'm kind of looking forward to that, uh, the the ladder match for the Intercontinental, Intercontinental Championship title, be because excellent. I think that's going to be uh, very uh, interesting with the, com with the participants, especially I want to see how Samoa Joe interacts. Like I said earlier, I'm a big supporter of Samoa Joe, so I want to see how he interacts with not only the other superstars, with inanimate objects like the ladder being presented now. True. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm tired for me to choose one, so I'm going to choose two. Oh, one is uh, John Cena <laughs> versus Triple H. Interesting. I just think, you know, an I icon versus icon. Mm -hmm. um, Triple H is obviously more, he's in the executive role right now, but he's in fantastic shape. And John is always in excellent shape. And the other one is Undertaker versus Rusev. Undertaker looked really good at WrestleMania. He was moving really well. Whatever he had done to his hips worked because he looked like he took years off. And Rusev, Rusev seems like he's at, you know, at, at a peak right now. So let's see how an, an icon does with a young bull who's at, at his peak. I can't believe they're having that casket match on Rusev Day. That makes me crazy. <laughs> well, what are they supposed to have it but on? I guess Rusev every day, day is Rusev seven Day. Seven days a week. Uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, Raw tag team match with uh, Matt Ooh. Hardy and Bray Wyatt against uh, The Bar. I think that's really going to be a fight. I don't think it's going to be a lot of technical skills. I think it's going to be a fight and also very entertaining. The uh, uh, SmackDown tag match with the Usos and the Bludgeon Brothers as well. I think the, both tag matches have a lot of potential. I'm so happy you brought up Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt because I'm really buying into <laughs> this combination of them. And even their their entrance out, like I love it. Mm -hmm. Everything goes dark. They have a light. Everyone's cell phones are on. Like I'm really buying into it's, it until Bray Wyatt finally turns it's on. It's a that. nice presentation. <laughs> I'm just curious to see how it translates over in the Middle East and how they yeah, it'll accept be interesting. This. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Well, the production for the Greatest Royal Rumble looks like it's going to be oh, oh, second yeah. to none. Yeah, the charts. And the city of Jeddah looks like a wonderful place to be. Oh. So I, I really want to see how it comes across on on the TV. Mm -hmm. Coming up, guys, uh, backlash pay per view where we'll see co branded. It's a co branded pay per view, so. Mm -hmm. Superstars from Raw and superstars from SmackDown will be competing against each other. Do you like this? What are you looking forward to the most? I like the fact that it's co-branded. Uh, I understand that some, some of the matchups like Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns and uh, Seth Rollins versus Miz are, are guys from separate brands facing each other. But these matches were made before the actual shakeup, so that's explainable. I just hope going forward in the future that the SmackDown branded superstars stay matched up with them and Raw and vice versa. That's all. Yeah, I do not like co-branded pay-per-views. What happens is <laughs> is the guys that are already top guys, they, they, they stay top guys, and now there's going to be top guys from both brands making up a whole pay-per-view when a pay-per-view should be an opportunity for, you know, mid-card guys to prove their to prove themselves and hopefully become top guys, but now they're going to be off pay-per-views. So... It, it happened when the brands, when, when Raw and SmackDown were both co-branded. It was not good for guys that are trying to make it to that top spot. And the other thing about this particular show, because all those matches were booked before the, the shake-up the shake happened, a lot of titles could switch shows. You've yeah. got a lot of opportunities for titles to end up on, or a lot of titles could all end up on one show, depending yeah. on who comes out on top. Are you in my head? Because I was really <laughs> just about to ask that. Um, and playing devil's advocate here, does it not bring up like another level of excitement to see superstars that we may not normally see go against each other now go against each other on this co-branded pay-per-view? Yeah, it does. I always love the like the factor of it being unpredictable. Yeah, you know? yeah I do too, but. Uh, um, Again, I, I'd rather see that the if we're going to have a brand specific shows like Raw and SmackDown, I'd rather that the superstars face each other. And to Anthony's point, I get his point about mid card talent uh, possibly being left off these pay per views, but that is more incentive for them to Stop up their up. game on their respective branded shows to get on the pay per view. Absolutely. All right, and uh, guys, tragic loss in WWE. Mm -hmm. Bruno San Martino, uh, he had a legacy inside, outside of the ring. Talk about it. But. What can you say? Probably the, the greatest champion in WWE, WWF history, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a genuinely great person. I mean, any, 
I had the pleasure to meet him um, uh, early in my career. A really quick story. I, uh, they used to do television tapings in Brantford, Ontario, every three weeks, and he was part of the broadcast team. And, and one of my jobs was to transport the talent to Brantford in a minibus. And in the bus was Bruno San Martino, Classy Freddie Blassie, Bobby wow. Heenan. Wow. Uh, I mean, like all these legendary people. And I'm like this young kid driving the van going, oh, this is so cool. And then Bruno just said out of the blue, he said, hey, kid, how long have you been working for Jack Tunney? I said, well, oh, about five, six months, sir. He says, would you like some advice? And I thought to myself, oh, my God, Bruno San Martino is going to give me this great advice. I said, yes, sir. What, what is it? He says, get out. I said, excuse me? He says, get out of the business because once it gets in your blood, you are hooked for life. And he was dead right. He didn't mean it. in a. a he, <laughs> it was just a joking manner. You know, everybody else says, ah, oh, Bruno, leave the kid alone. But we spoke about it afterwards, and he was, like, so warm and genuine. Uh, Great man. When I, was a little, when I was a little kid and the uh, wrestling figures were out, Bruno San Martino was one of the first guys in the wrestling figures. And I was young enough that I didn't know who he was. And so I had the figure of Bruno San Martino, but no idea who he was. And I actually get this, guys. There was a thing called a library. And I had to go to the library <laughs> and go. look up Bruno San Martino. And I learned all about him. And I realized he was one of the best guys ever. Uh, that figure allowed me to learn who he was and then of course watching the network I get to see all the old matches and stuff and I like now that the new figures do have some throwback guys that kids mm -hmm. can learn who they are too. Yeah. Yeah, he he was also he was the man at a time that wrestling was was it was magical. It, it was it was MMA, it was boxing, it was prize yeah. fighting. It can never be duplicated. Bruno's success will never be duplicated. Uh, I forget how many 187 yes. MSG sellouts. Yes. You know, that just, it, it was incredible. And being, growing up an Italian Canadian, Bruno San Martino was a household name, a legend. And it was, they were, we were legitimately proud. Like, look, 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 that's one of us. He came from Italy like us. He's, and everyone knew how far their hometown was from his hometown. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they could put it into perspective. Um, super gentleman. Legit strong man. Yeah. Feats of strength were incredible. At records. At, at records. Really, yeah. Real strong guy. And then when you meet him, articulate, intelligent, humble. classy, humble. humble. All the characteristics you'd want and if you were raising a son. If, if, you, if, if nobody got the chance to see the special on the WWE Network uh, that aired after Raw this past week, tells his story from his time in, in Italy during, uh, during yeah. the Second World War and stuff. Go back and watch it. You will have a different appreciation and respect for Bruno San Martino. Yeah, but if you're born in 1935 in Europe, you I mean you're, you're 10 years old when the war ended. That, that affects your whole outlook yeah. on life for the rest of your life. Absolutely. So you know what I love about Bruno is, of course, after he passed, everyone during his lifetime and now after, everyone has such positive things to say. And I feel like when you go, that's how you want to be remembered. And Legacy. he's a true yes, he's a true legend. He will be missed by so many people in WWE outside of WWE. And uh, yeah. We're sending our thoughts and prayers to anyone who is close friends and family with him. Uh, more Aftermath TV when we get back from the break. It's time for our favorite part of the show. Drum roll, please. Ask Aftermath. Um, Jimmy, it. come on. You didn't participate. Uh, I don't do percussion. <laughs> okay. uh, first question that we had is... Why are why is Baron Corbin so hard to relate to for fans? I mean, he didn't eat, sleep, breathe WWE when he was growing up. But in my opinion, you know, I talked to him at WrestleMania 34. He's got a lot of potential, and I think Vince McMahon right now is really backing him, which means something. So why is it so hard for WWE fans to connect with him? Ah, that's an interesting question. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that in fans' eyes and their perception is that if you become a WWE superstar or even a a, an NHL player or an NBA player in Major League Baseball, you need to have that certain passion. And in Baron Corbin's case, it wasn't his first choice, basically. Right. So in their eyes, he's not a, a dedicated uh, WWE superstar that, that looked to do this all his life. But when you're good at something and you can get paid for it, does it really matter if you well, have yeah, that passion for it? I think with Brock Lesnar, it's the same way. He doesn't yeah. eat, sleep, breathe WWE, so why do the fans not but like him as guys, much as they don't like Baron Corbin? You can develop new passions as your life goes exactly. on. You know, yeah. like, I loved soccer growing up, and I don't play soccer anymore. It doesn't mean I can't do anything else in my life. No, like actually, if you're, it does It mean. does. Okay, so <laughs> I, I should just... Well, hey, I, I'll admit, I wasn't... I'm not the, the biggest wrestling fan in terms of history. Uh, I can't tell you who's in the main event of any WrestleMania. Um, 
I had to learn a lot when I became a wrestler. Right. Literally, I knew I had a skill set that would be directly applicable, and I liked wrestling as a kid, but yeah. I didn't watch it through university. And high. I was a father, you know, I was busy. I was, in, you know, I was doing judo and stuff, but so I, I get Baron Corbin. This is the thing. So he's a badass. We're not supposed to uh, like him, but he's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. The way he moves, the way he looks, he's, he's strong, he's athletic, he's smooth in the ring. So I don't really, if I, I, always, I always equate it to the kid. If I'm a kid watching saying, I don't like that guy, he's kind of bad, but I don't really like, dislike him too much because he's kind of cool also. So you got to be a little less cool yeah. to be hated. And to be liked, you gotta have a better personality than <laughs> the one he's portraying on TV. That might explain why he's kind of a, a tweener right now. Tweener. He's, well, if he's you're not, a villain, you're a villain. That's all. He's That's kind right. of, yeah, somewhere in be the middle. Be a bad guy. If you're gonna be a bad guy, be a bad guy. Yeah. Exactly. That's all you gotta say, Nug? Yep. Nothing more, right? No. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Uh, why are moves, and Jimmy, I feel like you can answer this because you were a referee. Mm -hmm. Why are moves like the low blow illegal, but moves like the atomic drop aren't? Well, the low blow is an actual direct hit to the. Uh, groin area. Groin area. Let's, can, can we say that on, on groin so. area? Scrotissimus region. There we go. Well, uh, that's more technical than I would get, but anyways. Uh, the atomic drop is actually to the tailbone, and I'm sure Anthony has performed this move several times, and I know that people automatically say, well, what about the inverted atomic drop because the person is inverted? It's still the same thing. The, the, the blow is to the tailbone region. Whereas the low blow is actually somewhere else. One sends a shock to your spine, and the other sends a shock elsewhere. <laughs> to your yeah. Elsewhere. If you had to take one, <laughs> you if you were going against someone and they were going to do one move on you, what would you rather it be, the low blow or the atomic drop? Uh, definitely the atomic drop. Yeah, I vote atomic drop. Yeah, I'll take atomic drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, right. I think I, I think that's unanimous. <laughs> but this is the part. Okay, now the, the the moment of impact is kind of hidden. I believe in the undercarriage. <laughs> so we, we don't know exactly where it's hitting, but we, we, we have an idea. We assume yeah, we know. Yeah, we and assume. as a referee, you can't call what you can't see. And you can't see that region, so there you go. Oh yeah. my goodness. All right. I'm, Thank you for story, your I'm questions, to everyone. <laughs> Please keep sending them using the hashtag Ask Aftermath. We love answering them. Uh, enjoy the next episode of SmackDown Live. I'm so sad that we have to go, but we'll see you next week.